In this episode of New Jersey Living, we are making a return visit to downtown Jersey City where we've been doing a deep dive on the various neighborhoods of that particular location of Jersey City. So if you've been tuning in, you already know where we've been thus far. If you have not by chance, definitely go to the page, take a look and see some of the features we've done on Newport, Hamilton Park, Harrisburg Cove, um, Paulus Hook. Now, today we are going to take a dive into the village. So stick around for this episode, get a few features and see some recent property sales that have happened in that market. Let's take a dive now. Hello, my name is Corey Jones and I am a real estate agent in the state of New Jersey, team leader of the New Jersey Living Group and host of New Jersey Living, the podcast. Uh, my office is Coldwell Banker and I am routinely putting out content just like this for viewers just like you. So if you are looking to learn or are interested in all things New Jersey, this is the channel for you. So be sure to click like, subscribe, notification bell, stay updated on the features that we have coming. Obviously today we're doing some feature on Jersey City. Those who are maybe new to the channel, you're gonna notice that we do feature recent sales in the market. And there's a reason why we try to really feature market activity that reflects where we stand right now. And right now in terms of time is in August of 2024. Uh, if you want to take a look at my website, you'll get more updated information. I know a lot of people go to Redfin, Zillow, some online um, platforms, but coming from my website directly will give more accurate information as to what already has an accepted offer and what does not. Whereas Zillow, you're not going to get that information. You're just going to ask people about properties that are often already in the process of going under contract. So be sure to click through my website. You'll find there's an option that you can even look up specific property information by uh, address. So utilize that tool. Our aim right here on our site is to provide you with five star information in terms of content uh, to reflect the ratings that we have right there on Google. So just look me up. So again, welcome. Welcome to this episode. Also want to just plug in there. If you are a first time buyer, not even first time buyer, but just a buyer in general or coming into the area from maybe a different region or a different country, I do have my buyer's guide and my relocation guide right here on this channel. And it's in the details below. So we're back in the downtown Jersey City scene. I'm going to flash up a map where you're going to be able to look at the village in terms of its boundaries. And you'll note that it's not very large, which downtown Jersey City itself is not extremely large, but definitely definitive neighborhoods that are separated um, in that space. So as you look at the map, you can see Sixth Street would be the northern boundary. Christopher Columbus uh, would be the southern uh, Coles to the east and the New Jersey Turnpike, that Newark Bay exit on the far western edge. So it's not a large neighborhood by any means, um, but this is something that you've been noticing when we've had other features like Hamilton Park, for example. So Hamilton Park is just kind of to the north um, of the village and Harrisburg Cove, um, Harrisburg Cove, which is to the east, is where you find Grove Street Path Station. There is a very convenient walk or bike ride or scooter ride to the Grove Street Station, which is, makes this such a prime location in terms of commutability and those who are commuting to whether it be New York City or need to get to mass transit in Newark and take trains from there. So taking a walk through the village, there are very similar sites that you will find in both uh, Hamilton Park and even part of Harsmith Cove, you see some brownstones, you see that there's not really much inventory at all or homes that are standalone, detached, single family. So you have a significant amount of condo uh, inventory in that general area. Walking the streets, uh, they tend to be like these small, narrow streets. Uh, they're sections of the village that are very quiet and has a decent amount of trees as well for a more like urban section. But like much of the other portions of downtown Jersey City, the, these date back the furthest in time. Like these are very much historical areas that still do have buildings that are standing structures since the late 1800s. Right. So they're not as um, prevalent today as it would have been, say, like 50 years ago. But nonetheless, you'll still find some. Uh, there's also newer activities. So we're going to flash, you know, just some footage of some of your newer buildings and 
you're going to see a few condos specifically that are uh, reflective of this in, in the sales inventory. So there's options that are brand new. Um, and because we have some like really new uh, buildings that have just gone up over the past probably 18 months. And then there are some that are maybe over the past maybe 10 years and those that are very historic. So there's a blend for sure. Uh, there's also multifamily options. A uh, few cases you may find parking. There's not an abundance of parking uh, in the area uh, of the village, but if you do have it, then it is very much a premium. So this is going to be a blend of um, some of the scenes of the homes that you're going to see and then some of the more retail, restaurant, social scenes that are along Newark Ave, which that portion of the village is where you would find more of that kind of retail or restaurant or social scene, scene activity is going to be along Newark Ave that cuts all the way down into Harsomans Cove down towards Grove Street Station, that is. So let's go ahead and take a look at a few of these properties that I wanted to feature in the episode. And in between, we're going to take in some of those neighborhood aesthetics that give you a better feel for what it's like to live and just browse through the village. As usual, I try to keep the most recent sales as the feature properties that we take a look at in these episodes. So I didn't go back beyond July 1st. So this is not reflective of everything that's happened during the calendar year or the past year, just very much most recent and most recent sale that we have of a multifamily. I'm going to start with multifamily first because we only have one for this uh, particular location. So this would be 313.5 4th Street. In our urban centers like a Jersey City, like a Newark or even Patterson, it's not uncommon to get the halves because you have numbering systems where there may not be a way to squeeze in this newer building between two that already are sequentially numbered. So you do at times find the, the half. So in this case, 313.5 4th Street, three and a half 4th Street. This uh, is a multifamily that is a total of three bedrooms and two and a half baths. The lower level being one bed, one bath, and the upper level uh, looks like it was two beds and one bath. And I'm not sure if that half, that half is showing on the second level and the two bedrooms and full baths showing on the third. So I'm not 100% sure how that configuration all laid out, but it was listed at one point. 482 million sold at 1.499 million eight days on the market. Um, just browse through some of these photos as you're taking a look at some of these. The uh, the property uh, when you're looking through these photos, what you're looking for primarily is when you see the kitchens and you see the bathrooms, you want to see what type of finishes there are. So the kitchen, for example, I'm going to just uh, flash that up and hold that for a minute. The kitchen, you can see uh, the cabinetry and the stone countertop and the stainless steel appliances and that it has a dishwasher, which you would expect for uh, this price point. Um, these are the things that you're looking for to see how the condition was in relation to upgrades or recent renovation. I wouldn't say this was recently renovated by any means, but definitely it had an upgrade in recent years. Continuing to go through, you can see the kitchen concept is relatively open, not very closed off. And the primary suite is another major price point factor with size. Does it have an ensuite and what kind of storage capacity it has? Uh, so this is not really going to be a master uh, or primary suite situation because it was a uh, Two family with one unit being one bed, one bath, the other two bed, one bath in terms of full. So these would have been common to anybody who was uh, in, in, the in the home or even visiting, but gives you an idea. Uh, so the other piece that we're going to really hone in on really quickly is the yard space. So this you see there's a small deck uh, off of the back, the rear of the home that drops down into a small yard space. But nonetheless, it, there's space there. Uh, and in the front, you can see that there is a driving um, spa uh, space for a driveway, one park, one car parking space potentially right there. All right. So those things do factor in heavily to market value in that particular area. So this one did not last very long at all. Eight days on the market. 
And that reflects that there was immediate attention and probably competition for this particular property. So this was our one and only multifamily. Let's go skip over to the condos now. There are five units for our condo inventory. Two of them are in the same building. And I wanted to really cover the continuum, something that was more on the lower entry level all the way up to the more luxury. Our first condo is going to be 395 on Second Street. Uh, this is unit number 1L. This particular portion of um, section of the village is really close to uh, the Turnpike Bay exit. So that overpass is very visible in that general neighborhood. You find some of the newer buildings down towards that end. Uh, so the far western edge of the village is where most of your newer construction buildings are going to be. So in this case, uh, we're going to again flash up some photos, take a look uh, on the interior while I run down some numbers. Uh, this was listed at 539000 sold at 515,000, 21 days on market. Square footage at 772 square feet, two bedroom, two full baths. And uh, I'm gonna flash up uh, the floor plan here, which is very common in both Hoboken and downtown Jersey City, where you have an entry point and there'll be a bedroom on each of the far ends of the unit. In some cases, the primary bedroom that has the uh, uh, the ensuite uh, bathroom will be on the street. In some cases, it was on the back. It has to be either uh, either or either way. Um, but that often uh, kind of coincides with what kind of window style size, if you will, uh, is there. Because if it's on, it's facing the street. If it's a newer building, it's certainly going to be a larger window letting in more natural light and adding the certain aesthetic uh, to it as well from the outside looking at the building so in this case uh, like i mentioned you have a bedroom on each end uh, there's the living room kitchen or dining living dining and kitchen is in the uh, more center and, and in this case, um, we have a common bath is actually just outside of the primary uh, bedroom, which is not always the case. It depends on the layout of the building and the plumbing, what have you. But um, you would think that in most cases, the other bathroom would be on the other side, but not in this case. So um, this unit, relatively speaking, for two bedroom at just under 800 square foot is a very moderate uh, size unit not a very large for two bedroom and looking at the photos you can kind of see why it's like that straight galley style bedroom bedroom sandwich in between kitchen and living room uh but this is what we consider entry level all right so let's take a look at our next spot grab a little uh footage in between of the neighborhood and we'll see what that next tier looks like in the village So our next two condos are in the same building. This is at 443 Second Street. This again, far edge, far western edge of the village, almost underneath the Newark Bay uh, exit of uh, the turnpike that leads directly into Manhattan. So this is unit number 314, uh, listed and sold at 785, 37 days on the market, two bedroom, two full bath. In this case, we're talking 1100 square feet. So we see the size is substantially uh, different from what we saw with that previous unit and flashing through 
the photos you can see this is a newer building and as i mentioned before the newer buildings tend to be on that western uh edge of the village section and it comes with different type of floor plan different type of concepts you see that it's more open uh you see that you know your features in terms of the windows they're going to be larger windows in terms of height uh, the ceiling height doesn't always uh vary from older buildings they have some older buildings with very higher ceilings as well but in this you're going to see uh, recessed lighting for example um, many of these buildings are going to have uh, or offer uh, engineered hardwood floors right so you'll find that is a feature in a lot of these buildings rather than your traditional traditional hardwood um, seeing the bathroom you'll notice the bathroom has a dual vanity sink which is another um, Plus, when you're talking about having relative limit, relatively limited space, but uh, some room to move around with multiple people living in the unit. So this is the first of the two units. The next unit, same building uh, in 443. We're talking about unit 307. Both of them are on the same floor. So that unit was 1103 in terms of square footage. And just keep that in mind as we review some of the numbers on unit 307. So 307, this is another two bedroom, two bath unit listed and sold at 879, 22 days on market. And obviously what jumps out immediately is why the price difference between the two. So I'm looking very carefully at the two pictures, uh, sets of pictures very much. Again, not we're not talking about a substantial difference in uh, upgrades of what we can see visibly hardwood floor. Uh, the uh, relatively open concept. Uh, the kitchen is not necessarily anything that flashes out right away. But what you do notice is that the square footage is larger, which means your bathroom is certainly um, a very spacious one with a walk in closet. Um, Say so yeah, they had carpet in some of the bathrooms as well. Um, they didn't have a picture of laundry that I recall on the other one, but this has two full size machines for washer dryer. It really just comes down to space. This was a larger uh, unit and also what can factor in, which this one I would have to be in that building to take a look is where that unit is situated on the floor. So if you have a certain type of view or if you are maybe a corner unit compared to an interior unit like these things have a market value factor as well. So that I'm pretty confident could have been uh, a factor into why <clears throat> these two units that are same building, same floor, relatively same type of you know general condition and upgrade would have been priced uh, so differently. All right. So just keep that in mind. If you are a shopper looking in buildings and are trying to find out, you know, what's what's going to be value from one unit to the next if it's the same building and even the same floor. That's something to take into account. Now we're at the luxury level of condo in the village section. This one is the first of the two that we're going to take a look at is at 58 Cole Street. So Cole, as I mentioned at the beginning, is that eastern boundary of the village section before you cross over into um, Harsimus Cove. And this is unit 2A priced listed at one point four nine nine million, basically one point five million. And it sold at one point four seven five. 59 days on market square footage, 1,963, just under 2,000 square feet, three bedrooms and three full baths. I'm going to point out the HOA fee on this one as well, which was 853. Let's go ahead and take a look at some photos right here. And you can see again, you can see why this is going to be priced where it is. There is an elevator leading directly into the unit. 
Um, ceilings look like very high ceilings, open concept, recessed lighting, windows. Uh, these are full wall length windows, uh, letting in plenty of natural light. Uh, you can see even in one of these photos, the image across the street is of a newer building like this one. Uh, this is and in every way your lux luxury level uh, type of accommodation, full size washer, uh, dryer, and this is a multiple level as well. So it seems like they had either a ground level or a lower level uh, with some exterior space as well, which is certainly something that adds even greater value. Rooftop terrace we see, only question I would have is uh, whether that would be shared or if it's individual, but this is very much what you should expect once you enter that one and a half million range uh, in downtown Jersey City. Although parking wasn't specified for this particular, particular property, the listing did show that one parking spot does come with the unit. It's just not clear whether that's garage or an assigned spot somewhere. There's not many lots whatsoever in um, the village, but my guess is that there probably would be either a port or um, of some kind of driveway that they may have had allocated for this given unit. Our final stop, and certainly the highest level of luxury for at least this list of properties over the past roughly 30 to 45 days is 359 Fifth Street. This is unit number one. Two cars come along, two car parking comes along with this unit, uh, which is gonna be reflected uh, in price point. 1.699 was the list priced, um, basically 1.7 million, and sold at 1.907 five days on market, three bedroom, three full bath, 2,112 square feet. Um, 829 is the monthly HOA on this, which is again, two parking spaces, right? Two covered in a garage. So we take a look at some of these photos. Uh, you're gonna see exactly what you would expect. Uh, you're seeing, again, like I said before, these wall uh, height windows, letting in lots of natural light. Uh, enhancing your um, feel of open space along with it. Very contemporary features uh, that reflect luxury living, right? Full size washer dryer. Uh, this is, yes, this is giving you a lot for your money, particularly when you compare to the shoppers in Manhattan. So if you are shopping in Manhattan, if you are downtown Brooklyn, if you are Astoria, if you were wherever you are looking right now in the city and you just come step over into Jersey City, I can guarantee you that this type of option is going to be much more attractive in terms of features. It's just a matter of maybe a level, level of convenience that you want or just to have that New York City, you know, address. All right. So uh, I would say absolutely consider some of these options right here in Jersey City for those that are at least giving some thought to what's on the other side. So this concludes our episode on the village section of downtown Jersey City. I'm hoping that you were able to gather some valuable insights and just appreciate some of the scenes, some of the footage that that comes along with uh, our tours of these given neighborhoods. Again, if you are curious about anything and need some insight or any assistance, by all means, reach out to me. My contact information is right here in the details. Do drop a comment as well. Uh, so if you're looking to buy or sell, my team is here ready to help you on your journey. And even if you are a homeowner and you're not considering selling yet, it is worthwhile to get an updated assessment of your market value. So my team, we provide that complimentary free of charge. Reach out to get a complimentary market analysis on your home. 
And those who are looking to buy, absolutely reach out if you're just trying to learn a little bit more or get a better idea on what's going to be the best fit for you or what's on the market given your specific taste. Uh, again, I have my buyer's guide. I have my relocation guide for those that want to browse through some information about New Jersey, the process of purchasing. And again, my team, we are here to help. So thanks again. We'll see you next episode. Stay safe and stay tuned to New Jersey Living.